I'm blue, but I would even would die. I would eat, I would die. I beat my face up, beat it well. My name is Paola. <laughs> I make videos about albinism for people with albinism so that we can live better with our condition. This is albinism. Today we're talking about sun protective clothing. So this is how this video is going to go. First I'm going to tell you where to find UPF rated clothing. Then I'm going to tell you about the different factors that make non-UPF rated clothing protective anyway. Because we talked about last week how not all clothes have advertised UPF but all clothes have UPF. I'm gonna tell you guys about something really cool that I found in my research. And then I'm gonna finish off with some tips, um, things that I've picked up, learned along the way, looking for protective clothing while going clothing shopping. So the Skin Cancer Foundation has a really cool, handy little application on their website to find sun protective clothing and um, accessories and uh, outdoor things and I'm gonna show you what it is so I'm gonna go ahead to skincancer.org probably should have zoomed in at the website sorry my bad but I'm gonna zoom in now I'm gonna go under prevention seal of recommendation in the drop-down menu so the cool thing about the seal of recommendation is that these brands are paying an incorporation fee so by buying these brands, we're supporting the Skin Cancer Foundation. I'm going to click search our recommended products, that black button. Um, as of the timing, uh, as of the recording of this video, the Skin Cancer Foundation does have a good charity navigator score. Okay, so they give us some options here. Sunscreen and cosmetics, accessories, clothing, fabrics, window film and glass, outdoor shade. So let's click sunscreen and cosmetics it's asking me am i an adult or am i a child next week um next week's episode i'm going to go into detail about sunscreen but it's asking me daily use or active or show me both i'll say daily use it's asking me if i want sunscreen with mineral active ingredients sunscreen without mineral active ingredients or show me both i'll say without because i actually do like Chemical sunscreen is asking me for the face or the body. Which one am I looking for? Or show me both. I clicked face. So here's some different options. CeraVe, Elizabeth, Arden, her Hawaiian Tropic. And then it's giving me some specs, some different information about these options. Um, it says SPF 30. So, so um, by the way, the individual products are certified, not the brands themselves. So I'm going to use the back button in the application itself. Um, if you use the back button on your browser, you're going to get turned around because it's going to back you out of the entire application. So better to use the back button in the, in the application itself. So let's click clothing. <clears throat> Excuse me. Not a bad idea to, you know, familiarize yourself with these brands. So, um, ABG Accessories, Andy and Evan, Beals, Florida-based, Columbia, so let's read. High performance active wear for men, women, and children made of fabrics awarded the seal of recommendation. Uh, this Florida-based retailer has been awarded the seal of recommendation for a variety of fabrics. That's the Beals, Florida-based one. Women, men, women, and children cool if you're you know shopping for a kid with albinism so let's look at um outdoor shade so there's a few options here let's look this brand is called copa the beach umbrellas and pop-up shade tents manufactured with fabric awarded the seal of recommendation so that's cool like if you're setting up an outdoor play area for somebody for a kid with albinism you know a nice little tent so they have a place to get some respite you know moment to rest up without leaving the party um so yeah, let's read about sunbrella manufactures a variety of residential and commercial use canopies awnings balances whatever that is shade umbrellas in, a, in over a hundred fabrics approved the seal of recommendation 
All right. And all of them have visit website buttons, of course. You can find UPF rated clothing online. You can also find it in athletic stores. So whether it's a store geared towards um, outdoorsy, fishing, camping, or if it's, you know, more about mountain climbing, like mountaineering, or it's a normal old sports store, or it's attached to a ski resort, or these different like athletic stores, they have options for UPF rated clothing. UPF is regulated by the EPA, so the Environmental Protection Agency, so we can rest assured that if it has a advertised UPF, it's, it's probably, we're probably good. But uh, I found this little breakdown. So a UPF of 15 to 20 blocks out all but 6.7 to 4.2% of the UV. UPF 25 to 35 means that 4.1 to 2.6 of the UV is getting through. UPF of 40 to 50 means that less than 2.5% of UV is getting to you. You won't find clothes advertised for um, less than 15 because at that point it's just normal clothes. It's not considered sun protective. When you're shopping for normal clothes, what do you want to look for to make sure that it's decently protective. So first and foremost material, across the board over and over, what I found is that polyester is the best. Hey, editing Paola here. So I just wanted to mention really quick that um, you can read the back of the tag of your shirts and um, the backs of pants as well, or sometimes the tag will be on the side of the shirt on the bottom right. And you can read those tags and see what percentage the material is. So when I go shopping, I take with me a jeweler's loop. I have like several of these floating around the house. Here's a more hardcore one. And these are cool because these are like 10 to 30 to 60, you know, magnification, really, really good. Pocket size, just really easy to whip out and read the tag. Okay. Other honorable mentions that came up. Wool, nylon, denim, and silk. Another factor is the color. So black and blue is better than white and yellow. The color absorbs the UV. So the worst option would be stark white. So like bleached white. The most important uh, factor though is how saturated the, col the color is. So yellow is not as good as yellow another factor is how heavy dense and thick the fa the fabric is so how tightly woven the garment is you can get a rough idea by shining a light through it in general knitted materials with stretch to it is better than like a stiff woven business shirt the fit also matters so loose clothing is better than tight clothing and uh, the dryness of it also matters so for example a white t-shirt has a UPF of 7 so that means that one seventh of the UV is getting through that's 14% that same t-shirt wet is a UPF of three, so it means that one third of the UV is getting to you. What is that in percentage? Like 33.3? I don't know. <laughs> I'm not in school to be a math teacher, don't worry. So another factor is how worn the clothing is. So the more it's worn and, and washed and, and whatnot, the more it loses threads, it also dulls the color. And then of course, if it has additives, if it has chemical treatments to improve the UPF, those additives, those treatments are meant to last two years. Two years of weekly washing is how long that UPF is going to, is going to be. What I found really interesting is that you can buy UPF rated clothing or you could treat your own clothes at home. So that would be really cool. I'd love to do that in one of these episodes. So it's called RIT Sun Guard and it's meant to take clothing from a UPF 5 to UPF 30. It doesn't work on polyester, which is fine because polyester is your most protective clothing. 
It's supposed to be for like all those like white cotton t-shirts that just became useless because I told you all this information. And the Ritzungard is supposed to last for 20 washes. So if you wash your clothing once a week, what's that? Five months? Do is there. So some other ideas that I have found while shopping for clothing and keeping an eye out for some protective clothing. Um, I shop in the women's section of clothing stores and I have found that it's easy enough to find a long sleeve shirt. What's hard to find is a long sleeve shirt that also covers my chest. So if you're, if you're a girl, you're looking for these clothes and you find one that covers your chest and has long sleeves and, and you think it's cute, like swoop, get it, because that's actually really rare in my experience. So of course we're looking for sleeves. Thumb holes are also a really good idea. That way it's protecting the tops of your hands as well. So one thing to note is that most clothing stores are seasonal. So in the winter they put away all the thin jackets from fall and they bring out the coats. You know, in the spring, they put away all the winter coats and they bring back those little thin long sleeves and, you know, little scarves and whatnot. And then in the summer, the tank tops come out and all of the winter clothes go away. All the cold weather clothes go away. So it makes sense if you're the type of person that only shops, you know, a couple times a year, try to make it that those times are in uh, spring and in fall because that's when you're gonna have the most options for long sleeves that are wearable year round. Like, not thermals, not coats, but like little little jackets, long sleeves. In the winter, you'll also find those types of long sleeves. They're meant to be worn indoors and under coats. Um, I used to work in a department store. <laughs> Another um, example would be if the weather permits, then wear gloves. Like even these little thin like cotton gloves. This one's like fingerless, but it also has a little mitten flap, you know? <laughs> it's cute. Um, yeah, if the weather permits, if the situation permits, wear gloves. So for example, if you're like working out outside or doing manual labor outside. Another thing is like watch out with flip-flops. As a Floridian, I essentially live in flip-flops. Like if you know me, I'm always wearing flip-flops. I'm wearing flip-flops right now. One thing that I always have is long, long socks. So uh, for example, I'm tall, my pants tend to stop shy of my ankle and then my shoes don't come up that high. So I have this like patch of skin like this. And you know, it's like, it, how dumb does it feel to reapply sunscreen on a patch of skin like that big? You know? So yeah, definitely have long socks. And there are long socks that are geared towards athletics, again, so it's more breathable. Yeah, definitely look for collars, look for hoods, um, even like those little thin hoods. I've seen even dresses with those little thin hoods. In my experience, finding dresses that have long sleeves is a little bit difficult, so these are some cute options. Look sexy. If you're emo like me, then like year-round, you can wear those fingerless gloves and hoods. So I want to um, really quick talk about like special circumstances. So like for example, when I was a kid, I was in dance class and sometimes we'd be dancing in just a leotard. Which if you don't know, a leotard is basically like a one piece bathing suit. And so, and sometimes the recitals would be like outdoors. So in that situation, um, there is a uniform. I have to look like all the other girls and I can't necessarily be like carrying around a bottle of sunscreen. I can't be carrying about around anything. I have to be focusing on, you know, practicing with my teammates and stuff like that. So a few different options would be like, definitely um, if you have someone that you can keep a jacket in their car, maybe do that. Maybe have a change clothes and go moment. So like when you're done, uh, go home, change. Uh, maybe come back later in the afternoon so it's not as intense enjoy the party but like a little bit more covered up or maybe you could make like small alterations to what you're wearing so for example like wearing skin color tights it looks like you're naked but it's a little bit extra protection or for example if you're like wearing a bralette maybe have a mesh top so that you have just a little bit more protection 
Um, I would say these little pieces of extra clothing, don't wear them at all if you're going to have the opportunity to reapply because in that situation, the sunscreen is actually going to be more protective. I just want to throw that out there because I want to be like alive to the reality that we're all human and we got to live our lives, you know, and I don't, I don't want to slow you down for a minute. No, no, no. Do everything that you were going to do anyway. But like maybe let's try to get creative and get resourceful and figure out ways that we can continue to be just a little bit more safe and a little bit more safe and a little bit more safe. And that kind of leads me to my last point, which is like have variety. Have a variety, it makes it much more pleasant. You're more likely to wear protective clothing if you have a variety, if it's not like, oh, I gotta grab my one hat. Like you're gonna have different options for different situations so that you can pick the best thing. Keep an eye out every time that you're around clothes, like, oh, you know, that looks like it'd be really protective and it looks breathable and. All right, guys, I'll see you next week. Next week, we're gonna talk about sunscreen. <laughs> see ya, bye.